to another episode of the Adrian Ross Show on the BMG Network. Thank you for tuning in, either on the bmgnetwork.com or on the BMG Network's YouTube channel or on a major podcast platform. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. I want to talk about a column I wrote. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do have a column that readers subscribe to. It is adrianrosscolumn.com. And so if you haven't subscribed yet to that, which is easy peasy subscription and completely inexpensive um, and, uh, and definitely worth it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know where you've been, but you should subscribe to adrianrosscolumn.com. It's called My View, My Voice. And my voice the other day on my column was about, and I quote the headline, the incredibly shrinking mask mandates. Again, the incredibly shrinking mask mandates. And I started the column this way. The incredibly shrinking mandates. Mandates have been the thing. It's bad enough that adults have been expected to be obedient to the lie that masks are the cure-all for illness when everyone paying even an ounce of attention knows better. If wearing them was the solution to an eternity of sickness and disease, coronavirus cases would not have increased when the numbers via the experts told us they were. I mean, if folks are mandated to wear masks and masks do what they say they do, then the numbers wouldn't have been going up, right? Or is that too much common sense to digest? Tell me where I'm off if I am. It's sort of like forcing a vaccine on people who then get the virus and pass it on to other people. It's also sort of like the folks suffocating us with masks also being caught not wearing masks themselves. If they thought it was the answer to what ails us, they would wear them even when the camera wasn't on. They wanted us to believe they believed, but now they're putting that into action as these mandates are suddenly no longer necessary. They're even setting children free in schools now. I'll give you one shot at guessing why now. All of a sudden, even Democrat states are lifting these mandates. So you have to wonder why, right? The bottom line isn't health, isn't declining positive cases, isn't following the science. The bottom line, as it is for most politicians when it comes to anything, is power. First, grasping it then maintaining it. So, can you say election year? The midterm elections are fast approaching and politicians are concerned about their bottom line, the power, real or imagined by we the people, to mandate anything is too potent for most of these folks to release. Now, it takes a weak person to find significance in forcing people to put something across their face and tie it behind their ears, but people get it where they can. And for two years, they've been getting it from people who have complied. Some because they feel they must, others because they think these so-called leaders know best, and still others because they're scared out of their minds. Many even have their children scared. They want to be free to see their friends smile, speak so that they can be heard, Breathe in unhindered breath, even clearly hear the teacher talk, if you can imagine that. But it's not going to be easy for many to make that adjustment because what has transpired has, in fact, been a form of abuse. And barring a miracle, abuse takes time to overcome, no matter what kind it is. Many of these Democrats, granted, health should not be a political issue, but I already told y'all this has nothing to do with health know they are vulnerable in the elections. So they're willing to open their hands a little in hopes that this will endear them to the people who will then vote them in office or back in office. And let me tell you what we're dealing with. Even if the politicians truly believe these mandates worked, they'd still be willing to end them in exchange for the possibility of political victory. But reality is that they don't believe, most never believed, and what they quote unquote believe after election will be determined by whatever is politically advantageous. Sad, 
but true. Okay, so there you have it. And let's pick up, let's pick up on that last sentence of the column. It says, I'll give you one shot at guessing why now. I don't know if you're there yet. I don't know if you caught on yet. I hope that you have. I hope you get what's going on here with these shrinking mask mandates. We'll talk about that. Let's talk about that. <clears throat> we have been told over and over again that we have to wear masks because it's for our safety, it's for the safety of other people, and people have even been absolutely maligned and absolutely disrespected if they chose not to wear a mask. You don't care about other people, you're selfish, you know, we, we've heard the whole thing. And then they started pushing the vaccinations and if you don't get vaccinated, then you don't care about other people and you should lose your job and people have lost their jobs and all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, because you're not following the science and all that. And even if you were vaccinated, then they still want you to wear one, two masks, right? It just was like, it's like never ending. And then all of a sudden now, all of a sudden people are coming out, these so-called experts, these politicians are coming out and saying, you know what, we're dropping these mask mandates. I'm talking Democrat areas, Democrat states where all of a sudden, hmm, we don't need the masks anymore. You, you, you don't have to, even the children in school, and we know we've been choking kids in school with these masks and masks, and it has affected their learning, we've been told, and, and, and affected um, their, you know, affecting their ability to, to speak earlier, the younger kids. It's just been, it's been a mess trying to play sports, wearing a mask, you don't, you know, it's just been a whole big mess, but then all of a sudden now, it's your choice, and, and you, don't, you don't have to anymore. Um, I don't know if there could possibly be somebody out there who actually believes <laughs> that this is for health, that this is because they cared about your health. I hope there's nobody that gullible left. I know there are probably a few. So again, why now? Well, it's interesting. Like I mentioned, I mentioned Democrats. This should not be a political issue, but it is, unfortunately. But these... Uh, these Democrat uh, places, these Democrat areas, these Democrat politicians who are vulnerable are now in the, you know, now let's, let's release these mask mandates. Why? Because this is 2022, which is midterm elections year. Okay. And the midterms are fast approaching because time is zooming by. And some of these folks, approval ratings are horrible. We know the president and the vice president's approval ratings are horrible, right? And so in desperate times, I guess people do desperate things. And part of that is what we're seeing right now. All of a sudden, all of a sudden we can drop the mass mandates. Why? Because it's going to help us, they hope, for these midterm elections, or if they don't, we could say it this way, it's going to hurt them. So let's get rid of the mask. Now, now I, I've been taught, and I, and I believe in believing the best in people. There's something to be said for that, and I'm one of those people. In fact, I have friends who tease me. They'll, they'll mention something, they'll, they'll, they'll mention something about someone perhaps, and I'm like, I'm always the one that says, well, maybe this, and maybe they, you know, they're like, no, maybe nothing. There, there's nothing good here, Adrian, and I'm and I'm always, you know, that's just the way I, I, I my mind works. I, I kind of believe the best in people, for the most part. But there's, you know, some people just show you who they are. You can't believe the best about them for that particular situation. And when it comes to this stuff with this coronavirus and with these mandates and all this stuff, I don't believe the best in a lot of these people. I've said that from the beginning, that for the most part, it's about power. It's about control. There, there's something about control. I get to decide when you can take that mask off or who has to wear that or whose job's on the line. And, and power has a way of making people drunk and they don't want to let it go. That's part of it. But it's also, it's also about 
a motive. For some, it's just sheer power. For others, it's it's a it's a motive what they do. And if they can gain something from it, which really does ultimately come down to power, but if they can gain a vote, if they can gain a seat or retain a seat of power, then they're gonna do whatever whatever it takes. And for for people, for these uh, vulnerable politicians, particularly these Democrat states, their their power rests in that seat, and they're gonna do whatever it takes. And so, here's the interesting thing. Again, they want to contain, retain this power. And so to retain the power, if they've got to relinquish uh, the, the mask mandate to do that, then they're willing to do that because it's not about your health. Even, here's the sad thing. Even if they thought that the masks really worked, I'm going to tell you that they don't. But even if they thought the mask really worked and that it was for the benefit of people to continue to wear the masks, <clears throat> they'd lift the mask mandate anyway if it would help them be elected. And that's, I'm smiling if you can see me on YouTube, but it's it's a sad kind of smile. It's just, it's just a shake your head kind of smile and what else can you do but smile kind of thing. Because I'm telling you that they don't believe that it works, first of all. And most of them have it, which is why they got busted many times without a mask themselves while they forced it on the rest of us and, uh, and on children. And most of them don't, don't believe it anyway. Okay? But even if they did believe it, even if they thought that wearing the mask was going to be helpful, was going to save lives, and this is sad, they would still lift the mask mandates right now before the midterm elections. Why? Because it's not about your health. It's not about caring about you. It's about power. It's about control. And people, some people, corrupt people, will do anything to maintain control. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that they care more about control than they do about you. They may not care about you at all. They care about them. They care about the bottom line. They care about being reelected. So, boom, incredibly shrinking mass mandates. Now, how do I know... That that they don't that that they don't believe that the masks work. Well, it's obvious. I mean, again, they've been they've been places without a mask, getting caught, getting busted, then apologizing. You know, Stacey Abrams was with kids in a school. She's sitting in front of a bunch of kids. They're all masked up and suffocating, and she's got no mask on. You know, Nancy Pelosi at the hairdresser. We could go on and on uh you know aoc in, in florida i mean we could go on and on we we know the deal and here's the other thing they, i mean they decide we just had the state of the union president biden's state of the union address which i'm going to talk about in a moment here as it pertains to these masks right they decide you know what no mask mandate for the state of the union address Okay. And if you watched it, what? Like, how, if you really believe the masks work, all these people who've been preaching to us, to us about it, and you were given the option not to wear the mask, just like that, all of a sudden, like, almost no one had a mask on. I mean, I don't think any of the politicians had a mask on. So you went from just like that, preaching to everybody else, demonizing everyone else who didn't want to wear a mask, who didn't feel the need to wear a mask, who knows that the mask is not, you know, the answer. You went from that to all of a sudden somebody tells you that you don't have to wear one for the State of the Union address where you're packed in with people and nobody wears one. What does that tell you? That tells you that they didn't, they don't believe it to begin with. They didn't believe it to begin with. Even, you know, we know some of them didn't believe it because they were vocal, but even the ones who were preaching wearing it and making other people who weren't wearing it feel like they were heels, that they were, you know, to use a, to use a phrase from the old, uh, 
Little Rascals movie, scum. Between my toes. That's what they tried to make people feel like. And then they show up without a mask. All of a sudden now they believe that it's okay. But you were a demon. That shows you. That shows you because usually it takes time after you've been doing something for two years and you believe in it with all your heart. You know, it may take some time for you to get to that point. No, you were already at that point because you were wearing, weren't wearing one every chance you got. You just wanted to make everybody else wear one for your control. But now that it's lifted, boom. And it's and it was just, it was just a bunch of theater for the most part. Anyway, the day before, even the president is walking across the lawn, no outside walking across the lawn. Nobody else is near him, and he's got a mask on for the cameras. Then he comes into the State of the Union address, as he enters the you know enters through those doors, as you know how it goes, and you're shaking hands with everybody. No mask. So when you're outdoors, wide open by yourself. You're wearing a mask and then you walk in a crowded room, shaking hands and, you know, all that stuff and all up in people's faces and breathing. And you and you don't have a mask on and you seem to be OK with that, Mr. President. And the other people who are shaking your hands and, you know, shaking your hand and, and breathing in your face, they don't mind either. Everybody, nobody's worried anymore. All of a sudden, the incredibly shrinking mask mandates. Yeah. It's a game with people. It's a farce. Do you see it now? And not only that, a friend of mine, I want to share this with you. A friend of mine, her name is Christy, she sent me a link uh, to the Defender Children's Health Defense News and Views website. <clears throat> and it shares about an internal memo from a firm, okay, that um, is called Image, Image Impact Research. And it shows this internal memo from that uh, from that firm's polling, they did polling for President Biden's 2020 presidential campaign, okay? So they advise in this internal memo, uh, the Democrat Party, how it can present itself as having defeated, and I quote, COVID-19, and I quote that too, because I don't use that term, that's a whole different story, the coronavirus, but it's here. So this was a February 24th memo from what I understand. And it's called, it was called taking the win over COVID-19, okay? And this is what it's advising the Democrat party, these people who care about your health. Okay, yeah, this is politics and power play here, okay? It's a game. So this, uh, this, this memo closely matches this uh, website says, statements that President Biden made during his uh, State of the Union address just the other day. And it's a two-page memo by Impact Research. And here are some, of, this is what it says, the strategic thoughts, here are the, the strategic thoughts by Impact Research. Now I'm just gonna read some of these points. It says, this is the advice it gives to the Democrat party. Declare the crisis phase of COVID over and push for feeling and acting more normal. Hmm. Recognize that people are worn out and feeling real harm from the years long restrictions and take their side. Acknowledge COVID still exists and likely will for a long time. Don't set quote COVID zero as the victory condition. Check this one out. Stop talking about restrictions and the unknown future ahead. Stop talking about these restrictions, these mandates, this stuff, and the unknown future ahead. And there's some other things there, but look at that. So this was the advice that was given. Why? Because they care about you? No. Like I said, it's never been about health. This now, as we're entering the uh, midterm elections, Hey, here's some information you need to apply so that things are on your side, so that you don't shoot yourself in the foot. People, wake up. It's not about your health, your benefit. It's about power. So then, of course, the president does uh, make his speech. And as the Defender website says, it's, 
childrenshealthdefense.org, by the way, if you want to check it out, and then you uh, find the article there. But it says Biden follows the script. Yeah. He says, you know, he goes on, he, talk, he gives those, those talking points that closely parallel that memo that went out to Democrats. He says, for more than two years, COVID-19 has impacted every decision in our lives and the life of the nation. And I know you're tired, frustrated, and exhausted, but I also know this. Because of the progress we've made, because of your resilience and the tools we have, tonight I can say we are moving forward safely back to more normal routines. Again, notice the parallels. We've reached a new moment in the fight against COVID-19 with severe cases down to a level not seen since, since last July. Just a few days ago, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, issued new mask guidelines. Under these new guidelines, most Americans and most of the country can now be mask free. Hmm. And based on the projections, more of the country will reach that point across the next couple of weeks. Thanks to the progress we have made this past year, COVID-19 need no longer control our lives. Just politicians. I threw that in for free. I know some are talking about, quote, living with COVID-19. Tonight, I say that we will never just accept living with COVID-19. We will continue to combat the virus as we do other diseases. And because this is a virus that mutates and spreads, we will stay on guard. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Closely parallel. So again, it's frustrating. It's it's not just sad though it is but it should make us angry when we realize that we're being played that they held us in the palm of their hand and and you know what because we were so so quick to comply some were quick to comply because they believed these people unfortunately some were quick to comply because they didn't know what else to do but the more you comply you know the more that power causes them to create more things for you to comply to. And this is this is wild because the game that they play is 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 costly. You know, the mask stuff, the va and think about the vaccine, the people who have lost their jobs. There are people now who have lost their jobs as a result of stuff. You know, and we 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 know again, they didn't believe the mask worked because they want you to wear another mask and another mask and then and then the vaccination push and we know they don't believe in that either because even you know which which makes sense because you know people who are vaccinated are the, are, are are the ones spreading the thing you know so but we know they didn't believe in it because even with the vaccination you were still a demon if you didn't want to wear a mask and be vaccinated i'm not vaccinated and um, and so let me just throw that out there again, but if you didn't get vaccinated, you were a demon and then you didn't care about people. You didn't care about yourself. You were the reason for all the death and the destruction and, and yet you still got to wear a mask. And why? Cause they don't believe the mask either. So I don't know why that's supposed to be helpful, but the whole thing has been a farce. It's been, you know, all again, when I said, why now? The answer is this is a strategic time. It's advantageous now. It helps them, they think, as they move into the 2022 midterm elections, or at least it won't further hurt them that way because people are tired, people are worn out, and people see that you have no desire to get your foot off of our necks. And so now, and so they're vulnerable. And so now, all of a sudden, yeah. This state and that state and this state, you know, these Democrat states, all of a sudden it's okay now. And we'll let your kids breathe too. Please wake up. Please. Because this may not have been intended to be, I don't know, you decide. But it served as a test run because people complied like unbelievable and people bought it and that's the other thing and there are people who aren't even speaking to each other anymore i'm sure because of of masks people who aren't invited to somebody to a family dinner 
they normally go to, they've been going to forever, but your kids aren't vaccinated. You won't wear a mask. You're not invited this year. I mean, all kinds of stuff. People have lost jobs. People have had adverse reactions to, to um, vaccines and, uh, uh, you know, or, or worse. And I'm not, and I've said it before, I'm not anti-vaccine at all. I'm pro, you make up your own mind. And it's not your business if I decide not to. I'm pro freedom, you know. I'm pro you get to choose and you shouldn't be losing your job if you decide not to get shot up with something experimental for whatever your reason, you know. But I am anti this power grab that's not new. It's not like it's new. But I mean, when you see it front and center, when you say, okay, it's midterm elections time, all of a sudden, and then people show up at the State of the Union. I'm not blaming them for not showing up with, for showing up without a mask, but I'm saying you can clearly see you don't go from one day demonizing people who are not wearing a mask to the next day, you're in a crowded room with all these people in people's faces and you have no mask on and all of a sudden it's not necessary anymore. It wasn't necessary before. But you had something you thought apparently to gain from that power and more power. Bunch of theater. It really is. And for those of you who want to wear masks, you go ahead and keep wearing it. You want to keep your kids wearing it. You go ahead and do that. That's your decision. But to have demonized people for two years and to have preached that, that this was the, the way to stop the virus and all that. You know what? You should, they, these people should be ashamed. And the, and the shame of it is that they're not. That they're not. But anyway, I wanted to bring this to you because I, you know, I don't tend to believe in magic, but man, I'm telling you, those, those, um, the, these mass mandates are like incredibly shrinking. It's just, it's magical. It's, it's unbelievable that all of a sudden we don't need them anymore. <sighs> Lots going on here. A lot going on. And unfortunately, with a lot of it, it's obvious. So I'm done. I'm done. You get. I hope you get the picture. If you don't, then let's just, everybody, just stretch your hand forward toward the camera and just pray for these people's eyes to be open, please. And I do pray for the midterm elections that people are held accountable, not just um, seen for what they did the last few months because it served them well. Or they hoped it served them well. But look at the whole body of actions, etc. So again, I always appreciate when you tune in. Go to adrianrosscolumn.com and subscribe to my view, my voice. adrianrosscolumn.com. It's well worth it. It really is. So go check it out. And uh, also visit my website at adrianrosscolumn.com. Yes. And I have an online school, ARC Academy, Adrian Ross communications academy at um a at adrianrossacademy.com so check that out also leave a rating and a review go to apple Podcasts, for example and uh rate the adrian ross show and uh leave a review also i would much much appreciate it go to the bmgnetwork.com and check out the other podcasts that we have there which i always say we have great podcasters and they are insightful they are engaging you know, they are informative and even entertaining. So go check that out at thebmgnetwork.com. And I will catch you on the Adrian Ross Show next time. God bless you abundantly. The Adrian Ross Show was produced and edited in the BMG studio. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod. Find more episodes of the Adrian Ross Show at thebmgnetwork.com and major podcast platforms. Be sure to tune in regularly. You don't want to miss even one episode.